That's right, folks. Longtime owner Mr. Krabs is opening a new restaurant called The Krusty Krab 2. First of all, congratulations, Mr. Krabs. Hello. I like money. What inspired you to build a second Krusty Krab right next door to the original? Money. <laughs> Well, hello there, and this is Tamil, and there are some big announcements from Clip Studio Paint, and I got super confused reading about it, so I thought maybe I should make a video about it so that someone else can just watch it and try to maybe share their information, how they understood it, and it could be like a little dialogue so that we're all not all lost as to what's happening. And uh, the big announcement is that they're going to release version 2, which is awesome. But the other part of it is that they're trying to push for subscription models. So before you were able to get subscription and perpetual license, which I always, <laughs> that word always confuses me. So I'll just say one-time purchase. We were able to get one-time purchase or subscription. And on iPad, it was only subscription before, but on the computer, you were able to get the one-time purchase. But now they're saying, how about we switch it up a little bit and let's get subscription for both of these, but with some caveats, which kind of make everything really confusing. And I think they were trying to make the transition more fluent and not cut off the people who are on one time purchase immediately. But by doing that, they kind of made it even more <laughs> convoluted in a way. So let's just let's just try to see uh, beyond the marketing and let's see what is actually happening and see what is going to happen with Clip Studio Paint. Let's go over facts. We're going to get updates for version one, which we have right now, until the end of the year. Version two is coming out soon. And if you want to get version two, you can pay for an update pass, which makes that's where the confusing part gets in. And update pass is you buy version two for one year, and once that one year runs out, you are back with version one. The confusing part also is that they haven't announced the pricing for the update pass. And that is why I'm also kind of confused. You made this big announcement, but you're not making it clear as to which direction should I go because I, I can't really make a decision right now if I wanted to buy Clip Studio Paint or uh, switch to another software because they're still not announcing the pricing for that. The good news is that you're still going to be able to use version one, uh, regardless of what's happening. I think they're going to have bug fixes for quite some time, but they're not going to add new features or do anything crazy with version one. Once version three comes out, then they will drop version one, which I think is quite some time. They're, they just announced version two and it took them about 10 years to get to two. So maybe five, 10 years for version three. And only then you're going to stop getting uh, bug fixes for version one. And also there is no problem with um, using software without the bug fixes because um, there are some old softwares that people still use. So for example, people still use Photoshop CS6. Yes, there are some bugs in there, but they're you know, it's a really good software if you still want to just do basic painting and editing and things like that. So it's not like if they stop updating it, it's going to completely destroy your laptop and crash and things like that. But obviously it depends on which system you are on. Will I be able to get free updates for features? And they're saying kind of, no, you have to get subscription and then you will get the updates for new features. And if you have version 2.1, and you did one-time purchase or update pass or whatever, then you're not going to get the 2.5 or 2.6 uh, new features or so. I'm reading this uh, with you and I'm trying to decipher it. And basically that's what it says. And you can do update pass, which is valid for one year. You will get pretty much most of the updates, but once update pass expires, then you're gonna have to reinstall version one again. You know, it, it's kinda, you know, it's 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 a little salty. I feel salty just a little bit. I, I feel salty here, but 
uh, you know, it, it doesn't feel unfair, especially if you think about the pricing compared to other competitors. And so let's just get into it. So what are our options pricing wise for now? And uh, let's try to think of different alternatives that can be provided in case you don't want to stay on Coop Studio Paint or you want to switch to something else. So let's just get into that. So there are two main uh, parts to this is Clip Studio Paint Pro, which is pretty great. It has most of the features and Clip Studio Paint X, which is mostly targeted towards 2D animation. So if you want to do 2D, you want to get the X. And if you just want to paint a lot and do everything else, you can do the Pro. And there are monthly payment plans, but on the website, it says from 99 cents a month, which is kind of not true. So let's get, let's click on the button. And now we see that there are different plans and the 99 cent one is actually the on smartphone device, which is not what we want. We want the computer one, right? The cheapest version that you can get, if you have one device, you have either computer or iPad or something else, then you can do pro, which is just for painting and you do monthly 449 which is great but also you will save money if you go annual annual is only 24.99 which is basically $25 and if we divide $25 by how many months are in a year you practically get around $2 a month to use clip studio paint with all updates all features on your computer with one device and i think for $2 that is a pretty Pretty good deal, honestly. I, I hate subscriptions just as much as the next person, but for $2 getting the most advanced Clip Studio Paint version with no problems, every update, everything, I think it's kind of worth it. You can also have two device plan, which is basically annually $44 and $44 divided by 12, it comes down around $4-ish um, every month. and. Two devices you can have an ipad and you can have a computer both works completely updated everything is fine and uh, that's kind of for probably professionals and people who are more um you know trying to get to work from home but also take their ipad with you and you know do paintings in coffee shops and anywhere else they want and the same goes for up to four devices and annual is 54 so it's only ten dollars more a year which is honestly not that much money but i know that a lot of people are you know students and they're trying to save money and not spend too much and i was in the same situation and i went through my graphic design degree with i tried using photoshop in school but when i was at home i was actually using uh, affinity photo which was really great for photo editing and web development, and it's not really that great for painting. That's why let's uh, just go over some painting software that we can uh, look at as Clip Studio Paint alternatives. Before we get into other programs, I think Clip Studio Paint is very unique in the way that it has materials. So if there's a house or anything else, 3D pose, uh, 3D model having a sword, and you can rotate the camera around. All of that is not really available um, in that same way it's accessible like in Clip Studio Paint. Yes, you can do those things if you use Blender or Maya or anything else, but in that same kind of simplicity and it's, it's right there in front of you and you can use it at any time you want. I think Clip Studio Paint is very unique in that way. Uh, second thing, it has great perspective tool um, options compared to everything else I've ever used. So if you need perspective and you use the 3D models a lot and materials, I think it's still worth it to pay a couple of bucks a month for the most updated things or just stay on version one. If you don't really use those excessively, then you can probably look at other softwares to see if you can find one-time purchase um, painting software. So let's just get into it. Obvious candidates to switch from Clip Studio Paint are going to be Procreate. Uh, it's great for one-time purchase. It's only about $10, I believe, and it works pretty great. I use it for sketching and getting my ideas down. And if I'm on the go with my iPad, if you're really into painting and mixing colors, I believe Paint Tool Sci is a great option. Reasons why I would use Paint Tool Sci is because it was developed by only one person, 
So by purchasing that, you are going to support the creator. Secondly, it's only starting, I believe, about $50 or so. So for one-time purchase, $50 is not that much if you're going to use the software for quite some time. I also know that it's very not intense on your computer. So if you have a slower-ish computer, it's pretty great option if you want to get something that is not as heavy and intense on your processor. Another option would be Sketchbook. And they used to be called Sketchbook Pro, and then they broke off from Autodesk and they rebranded themselves as a Sketchbook. You can get it from the Microsoft Store or Apple Store for about $20. And there are some rumors saying that the stability became um, a little bit less stable, but I still think it's great software, especially if you're going to get any perspective and ellipse tools over there are quite irreplaceable in any other program. I really like it. And the brushes are not as versatile. You're not going to find large brush selection like an Eclipse Studio Paint, but I still think it's really great for sketching and mostly people use it for industrial design, but you can still get really painterly with it. I really like using it whenever I have time. And last but not least is Krita. I love Krita. I started my art journey with Krita and then I switched to Photoshop for my school. Then I did Affinity. Then I did Clip Studio Paint for quite some time. And honestly, Krita is very <laughs> close to my heart. I'm not going to lie. The functions that you can find in Krita are pretty much almost close to Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint. Yes, it does not have anything so fancy as, you know, AI filters like in Photoshop or maybe 3D models like in Clip Studio Paint. But if you're looking for just a program to paint in and use brushes, I think it's really advanced and you should give it a try. One thing I want to warn you about, is Krita free? Yes. Is Krita free on Microsoft Store? No. I'm not sure why they did that, but that uh, makes people confused a little bit. If you buy it from Microsoft Store, you support the creators and you get automatical updates. But if you download it from the website, it's going to be completely free. You don't have you, all the features are there. Everything is there. And the only thing is if the new version comes out, you just have to manually download it and update it, which, you know, it takes like 20 seconds. Probably my favorite program if you're trying to start out with digital art. So what is the final conclusion for this? All I want to say is um, one, I'm really excited about Clip Studio Paint version two. If they are so confident in only offering subscription, then those features must be really good. And we don't really get that many features for painters because in Photoshop, most of features are targeted towards more um, photo manipulation and things like that. Two, if I want to stay on Clip Studio Paint, I would either stay in version one forever as much as I can and save myself money, not care about new features. It's still going to work great. If I want the new features, I will probably start to get the subscription because it's that cheap and accessible. Uh, I don't think a few bucks a month is that big of a deal for my budget, but I know there are people out there who are having problems with that even um, because the economy is really not great. Three, if I want to ditch Clip Studio Paint, I don't want to do subscription. I would really look at um, Paint Toolsci and Krita. Those are main options that I would do. If you have iPad, I would really look at Procreate, but I would start definitely with Krita and then think about Paint Toolsci. I think these three options are probably the best ones because I've, see, um, I've seen a lot of cool artists use different programs. And those are the main ones that they kind of switch to if they don't use Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint. And that's about it. Thank you for watching. I really hope this was kind of informative and I tried to condense it as much as I can. I've read the article probably three times before making this and I'm still a little bit lost. So if you think I made a mistake and there are things that I missed, definitely drop it down in the comments. You can subscribe for more because I'll probably still make tutorials for Clip Studio Paint in case you decide to stay on it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and happy painting.